Wandering Winder here with more in the Dominion homework series. Uh, this is going to be an introduction to loops focusing on auto piles. So loops are, uh, well at least how I'm using it, um, you play a collection of cards, those both gain the same collection of cards and let you draw that collection of cards or get them in your hand somehow so that you can do the same thing again and you keep doing this um, until one of the piles is empty. Sometimes loops get you something as well, sometimes they just lower piles for you. Um, the simplest form of loops are auto piles. So what an auto pile is, is a way that you can just completely empty a pile uh, all at once from some starting game state, right? So what we're going to do here is set up very quickly a way to get that going. Um, and the easiest one is with rats. So rats gain themselves. So now my deck, I have at least one rats in hand and one in the discard. Or if I have two rats in hand and nothing in my discard, right? I need to have drawn my deck except for maybe a rats in the discard say. What I can do is just keep playing rats and I can keep doing that and I'm looping play a rats, gain a rats, play a rats, gain a rats until the rats are gone. It's not very useful very often because with the rats autopile you basically trash all the other cards in your deck that aren't either in play or on a mat or something. You end up with a deck that's just all rats and that's usually not a good thing. Um, but sometimes it ends the game because it's the third pile and that's the big thing to watch out for with all these auto piles. Uh, so rats is an auto pile that can work. Sometimes you can set up a magpie auto pile as well to where you play a magpie, it reveals the one magpie that's the only card in your discard, which gains a magpie, and then you play another magpie and it reveals the only thing, and, and you can do that with magpies as well. A little bit harder to set up, usually not something worth aiming for as like the goal of your strategy. The rats is usually not also either, um, but uh, sometimes it's something that'll come up tactically in the midst of your gameplay. The reason with magpie it's usually not that useful is not because having a lot of magpies isn't useful, like in the rats case, but the magpie thing is usually like the magpies run out before that comes up in most games, but it comes up sometimes, so do watch for it. Let's go back and look at our next um, if I can spell undo correctly. Go back to the start of the game and look for our next thing. Um, which is a lot of these are facilitated by cost reduction. So let's get some cost reduction. Most of them are also facilitated by drawing your deck, but let's work our way up to getting some highways. Okay, great. This is, this is five highways. Fantastic. Let's donate. Okay, so if I can get five, I, I say highway, but it's basically any cost reduction effect, right? If I can get five cost reduction effects, forums then cost zero, I can immediately pile all of them out, um, which gets me a stack of forums. Forums a good card, so it's something you typically want to do, um, but and it also empties a pile, so watch out for that. Um, you can do a similar thing a very similar thing with cavalries. Where you can empty the cavalries. You can do the same thing there with villas. You have to play the villa every time there. But you can pile those out. So cost reduction helps a lot with a lot of these things. Um, you can also do get a sculptor. You can sculpt, well you could sculpt sculptors and repeatedly do that if you had a source of getting extra actions. So that cost reduction plus sculptor 
will work for you there, but you also need enough extra actions for that for that to be worth it. Or this also works with, and you don't even need this much cost reduction in this case, but with scepter, you can drain all the scepters. The scepter thing also works with artisan, where you don't even need the cost reduction, but you do need an increased hand size. Um, yeah, so this is another set of things to, to watch out for. There's also, how far do we want to go back here? Let's go in here to where we're donating. There's also other ones that don't necessarily need highways. So there's some other things you can do with enough talismans. We're going to donate again here. If you have enough talismans, what you can do is with cavalry, this again, there's a similar thing with villa, it's not exactly the same, but with cavalry, you can, um, actually, I think I did this wrong. I needed a little more money. Well, you can get silvers and then buy a cavalry and then buy silvers and then buy, a well, you get the picture. Actually, let me just show you. Let me just show you by not trashing all these silvers. Great. So we get a cavalry. This gives us extra buys. This lets us buy silver, which lets us buy cavalry, which draws us a bunch more cards, which gets us a bunch of gains. We have a ton of gains from the talismans, so we can empty piles pretty easily. And, okay, whatever. You probably don't want to empty curses, but you get the picture. You can do a lot there. Um, just with talisman, you can buy silver, buy cavalry, buy silver, buy cavalry, and empty them out. You need to have, a, I think, three tal... I think it's three, but in the game, check out your math. It might be four talismans to be able to do that. You can do a similar thing with Villa, where you buy, you know, you have four talismans, you buy a Villa, you play all the Villas, it gives you four money, you buy Villas again, you get a bunch of extra buys. That way, um, and what else is left? There's, oh, there's a couple more that I want to show you here. So let's do before the talismans here. So let's get a couple stockpiles. Actually, just one stockpile should 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 be fine because we have enough extra money here. But stockpile and gamble is a thing, to where you then gamble all your stockpiles. You buy another stockpile. Now your discard has more stockpiles in it. I lost one money here because I just at some points because. I started with so few stockpiles. Typically, you want to have more, but if you've drawn your deck, stockpile plus gamble lets you drain all the stockpiles while making some money and a ton of extra buys, which we're going to see. And you can sit through and calculate out in the actual game, depending on how many stockpiles there are. You could also probably figure out a formula for it, but depending on how many stockpiles there are, um, how much money you're going to get, how many how many stockpiles there are and how many stockpiles you started with, how much money you're going to get, and how many buys you're going to get. But uh, the short answer is a lot. And you typically want to do this autopile because otherwise your opponent's going to be able to. That's the case for a lot of these autopiles. This actually does get you pretty far ahead. So remember here, we started with nine money and two buys, having played one stockpile. 
and we're going to end up with It looks like 47 buys and 36 money. So we added only 27 money. It's not like going to just totally end the game for us. Again, with cost reduction, things go cray cray. Uh, so it's not totally ending the game for us, but it made us more or less infinite buys. Like we can almost empty coppers here, right? And it made us quite a bit of money. So it's effectively a winning play here. In a lot of cases, it doesn't straight up win the game by itself, but it does a lot for you. Um, so in this case, you can then buy out, I don't know, whatever it is you want to buy out. With cavalry, there's some probably some loops you can do. And stockpile and cavalry themselves do semi-loopish things in some cases. Here I'm going to buy what probably the best way is to get some cost reduction up in here. And then if I'm trying to maximize... I would get some talismans. Now I'm going to take like some golds. All right, I'm just going to end up doing like all the loops at once here. And from here, given that I have all of this stuff going on, I could actually probably um, <laughs> like empty the whole supply here, probably. I think um, even without doing King's Court shenanigans, which I could also do with Gamble. But, you know, we're emptying a heck of a lot of stuff. So emptying the supply is kind of nice. Obviously, this is a very cooked board. So don't expect to be able to do this often. But, but it's always nice to do this at the end of a video. Not much strategic relevance. Um, the last thing is one more complicated loop, which actually takes more than this. Let's go way back up here. Okay, we're getting more highways still, right? Sure. Um, actually, let's get a workshop to help with getting the highways. Whatever. We want to get some king's courts as well, so let's get a couple king's courts. This is probably good enough now. Donate. So if I have a gainer that can gain the king's court, we can go king's court, king's court, workshop for king's court, any draw card in the workshop again. Then we king the draw card to do all the same. We king the king and we rinse and repeat. So this is a classic loop. And it'll eventually run out because, you know, one of the piles will run. Looks like in this case it's going to be the highways because the highway was our draw card and we needed it, extra copies of it for um, and we needed extra copies of it for uh, getting the thing set up but you know, it's fine. Um, other things to watch out for for loops. So cost reduction helps a lot. There's the forum, the sculptor, the artisan, the scepter. Uh, talismans can help with villa and cavalry. Villa and cavalry are very useful. Rats autopile. Forums can autopile with cost reduction. King's court loops with gainers that can gain to king's courts and draw cards. Watch out for develop there. Um, watch out for way of the butterfly. Stockpile can potentially loop, especially with Gamble, but sometimes with 
with uh, something like cavalry and occasionally with villa as well. Um, the other big cards to watch out for are like procession. So normal throne room won't work for, for these loops that King's Court work in. Um, I'll leave that as an exercise to the viewer because this video has already gone on pretty long. King's Courts work and sometimes processions work and basically the reason why procession works and throne room doesn't is that uh, procession is both a throne and a gainer so you need to use both parts of that. They're a bit tricky to set up but uh, watch out for that as, as a sign that a loop may be available as well. Typically with most of these you need to be able to draw your deck. Anyway this is just an introduction to loops like I said at the beginning uh, and an introduction to auto piles but do watch out for a lot of these because uh, you can be far ahead and if someone can boom all of a sudden end the game because they piled out with some loopy business uh, you don't want to get caught out by that but uh, yeah thanks for watching everyone